Hello guys, welcome back. My name is Daniela and today I have a huge charity shop book haul for you. There is a lot of fiction in this. There are some thrillers, there's some non-fiction and some classics. First up, we have a book called An Astronaut's Guide to Life on Earth. The back of the book says that he has logged nearly 4,000 hours in space. During this time, he has broken into a space station with a Swiss army knife, disposed of a live snake while piloting a plane and been temporarily blinded while clinging to the exterior of an orbiting spacecraft. This book, he's going to tell us about his experiences, he's going to tell us about what he's learnt from NASA, and apparently he's going to teach us how to think like an astronaut and change the way that you view life on Earth. I just thought this sounds really, really interesting. So I had to pick this one up, and this one cost me a pound. Next, I picked up a copy of We the Survivors by Tash R. I am not sure if this is a fiction or a non-fiction. I'm leaning towards fiction, but... I picked this up on a whim after reading the inside flap because it just sounds really interesting. So this one says, Lee Hock Lai, known to his friends as Ah Hock, is a young man with vague ideas of living in a better place than the Malaysian village he is born into, where families harvest cockles from the polluted mud flats. He follows the rules and strives to improve himself in a country that promises riches and security to everyone, but in reality delivers them only to a chosen few. With Asian society changing around him, Ah Hock remains trapped in a world of poorly paid jobs that just about allow him to keep his head above water. But what leads Ah Hock to kill a man? We the Survivors is a vivid and compelling description of the years building up to a shocking act of violence, a confession told over several days to a local journalist whose life has taken a very difficult course. Devastating and poignant, it is a portrait of an outsider like no other, an anti-nostalgic view of human life and the ravages of hope. I get goosebumps reading that. This sounds fantastic. I really hope it's good. Uh, this one cost £1.50. Next up, I picked up a copy of The Secret History by Donna Tartt. And um, this one cost me £2.49. This is a dark academia book. I think this book just celebrated its 30 year anniversary. So it's quite an old one. I think it's like the original dark academia or a very, very popular and famous dark academia book. So I am excited to try this. Next up, I picked up Fierce by Jean Phillips. I think this also has another name. I think it's sometimes called Fierce Kingdom. And this is a thriller book. It cost me £1.25. And it is about a woman who has taken her child to the zoo and a gunman turns up at the zoo. And they're basically hiding in the zoo from this gunman who I assume is going on some sort of rampage. This is a nice short one. It's about 260 pages long. And I have heard some good stuff about this. Next up, I found a copy of Notes on an Execution by Dania Kukafka. This is a yellow sprayed edge copy. And it also is hand signed by the author. Super, super happy to have found this one. And I think I only paid about £3 for this. Oh, I paid £6.50 for this. But it's signed and sprayed edges. I cannot not pick that up. This one says, Ansel Packer is scheduled to die in 12 hours. He knows what he's done and now awaits the same fate he forced on those girls years ago. Ansel doesn't want to die. He wants to be celebrated, understood. But this is not his story. This is the story of the women left behind. I've heard really good things about this. I'm really excited to read it. I'm really sorry. It's so dark right now. I've just got a light on. So you might struggle to see the front covers of some of these. But this is Between Shades of Grey by Ruta Supetis. I can't remember if this particular one is one that I've heard good things about or if it's other books by this author, but I just really like the sound of her books. So this one says, That morning, my brother's life was worth a pocket watch. One night, 15-year-old Lena, her mother and young brother are hauled from their home by Soviet guards, thrown into cattle cars and sent away. They are being deported to Siberia. An unimaginable and harrowing journey has begun. Lena doesn't know if she'll ever see her father or her friends again, but she refuses to give up hope. Lena hopes for her family, for her country, for her future, for love, first love, with the boy she barely knows but knows she does not want to lose. Will hope keep Lena alive? Set in 1941, Between Shades of Grey is an extraordinary and haunting story based on first-hand family accounts and memories from survivors. Uh, so this will be a heavy read, but it just sounds so interesting. And this one cost me a pound. Next up, I'm pretty sure I already have a copy of this, but I just couldn't resist this version. Um, so this is a little hardback of Pride and Prejudice by Jane Austen and it has a little portrait on the front. I just thought this was a really cute edition and it cost me a pound so can't go wrong. Next up I have been looking out for a copy of Anne of Green Gables because there was a TV series of it done I think like in the 90s 
with a particular actress and I am absolutely obsessed, absolutely love it. So I really want to read the book, but I wanted one where I liked the cover. I don't like a lot of the covers for some reason, but I found this one. It's a lovely illustrated one and I really liked it. So I picked this one up and this one cost me a pound. Next up, I picked up Mexican Gothic. This falls in the Gothic genre and this one cost me £2.99. I don't really know much about it. I just know that this is one of Sylvia Moreno Garcia's very popular books. So I would like to read this. This one cost me £2.99. Next up, I managed to find a couple of Mitch Albin books that I don't think I have yet. So I found Tuesdays with Maury. This is the one I think I've heard the most about. I'm not going to read you the synopsis for this just because I want to go into all these books blind. Uh, but this one cost £2.99. I also found one that I hadn't heard of. Um, this is The Magic Strings of Frankie Presto. Again, don't know anything about it. I've just heard that his books are really, really good. And I'm really excited to try these. This one cost me £2.99. This one, I have to admit, the cover pulled me in. It has like this anatomically correct heart in the background. And it's called The Marriage Plot by Jeffrey Eugenides. It says, Brown University, 1982, Madeleine Hannah, incurable romantic, is studying Jane Austen and George Eliot, authors of The Great Marriage Plots. As Madeleine contemplates the age-old motivations of the human heart, real life in the form of two very different men intervenes. The charismatic Leonard Bank heart attracts Madeleine with an intensity she feels powerless to resist. Meanwhile, her old friend Mitchell is certain of only one thing in life, that he and Madeleine are destined to be together. As all three leave college, they must decide the ending of their very own marriage plot. And this one cost me a pound, so... Really fun romance by the sounds of it. We're going through all the happy and sad emotions in this <laughs> book haul. Um, so this one is allegedly a novel by Tiffany D. Jackson. I love the cover for this. That's what made me pick it up. And then I looked at the back. Mary B. Addison killed a baby. Allegedly. She didn't say much in that first interview with detectives and the media filled in the only blanks that mattered. A white baby had died while under the care of a church-going black woman and her nine-year-old daughter. The public convicted Mary and the jury made it official. But did she do it? She wouldn't say. Mary survived six years in baby jail before being dumped in a group home. There wasn't a point to setting the record straight before, but now she's got Ted and their unborn child to think about. When the state threatens to take her baby, Mary's fate now lies in the hands of the one person she distrusts the most, her mama. No one knows the real mama, but does anyone know the real Mary? This is a thriller. It sounds super interesting and I paid a pound for this. Next up, we have YA Horror. Uh, this is from the Point Horror Collection and it is Night School by Caroline B. Cooney. I paid 50p for this and I'm trying to collect the Point Horror books because nostalgia. And I also found Reflection, which is a twisted tale, Disney twisted tale. This is based on Mulan. Haven't read any of these yet, cost me £1.50. Next up, I found a copy of The Mad Woman's Ball by Victoria Mass. I did not realise how small this book was. This book looks so tiny. This is like under 250 pages and it costs a pound. Oh, love the hardback. Wow, <laughs> did not know that was under there. This is, I think, women's fiction. It's based in an asylum in 1885. It says all of Paris is in the thrall to Dr. Charcot and his displays of hypnotism on women who have been deemed mad or hysterical outcasts from society. But the truth is much more complicated. For these women are often simply inconvenient, unwanted wives or strong-willed daughters. Once a year, a grand ball is held at the hospital. For the Parisian elite, the Mad Women's Ball is the highlight of the social season. For the women themselves, it is a rare moment of hope. Genevieve is a senior nurse. After the childhood death of her sister, she has shunned religion and placed her faith in Dr. Charcot and his new science. But everything begins to change when she meets new patient Eugenie, the 19-year-old daughter of a bourgeois family, because Eugenie has a secret and she needs Genevieve's help. Their fates will collide on the night of the Mad Women's Ball. Sounds amazing. And it cost me a pound. Next up, I picked up a couple more thrillers by Karen Slaughter. I don't know if these are thrillers so much as they are crime novels. I have read Pretty Girls. I wasn't that impressed. I found it a bit predictable and a bit boring. So I'm hoping maybe one of these will be better. Uh, so I have Kiss Cut, which is A Missing Girl, A Deadly Secret. And I also have False Witness, Two Sisters, One Secret, Someone Knows What They Did. Uh, this one cost me £2.50 and this one cost me a pound. Next, I found a copy of The Hate You Give by Angie Thomas. Apparently, this is a collector's edition. It's very nice. And um, this one cost me a pound. I've seen the film for this. The film is really, really good. 
Um, and I just want to read the book. Next up, I picked up The Authenticity Project by Claire Pooley. This one cost me a pound. I really like the end papers on this one. This one says six strangers with one universal thing in common. Their lives aren't always what they make them out to be. What would happen if they told the truth instead? Julian Jessup is tired of hiding the deep loneliness he feels. So he begins the Authenticity Project, a small green notebook containing the truth about his life. Leaving the notebook on a table in his friendly neighbourhood cafe, Julian never expects Monica, the owner, to track him down after finding it, or that she'll be inspired to write down her own story. Little do they realise that such small acts of honesty hold the power to impact all of those who discover the notebook and change their lives completely. I just really like the sound of this. Also, cover is stunning. Ah! <laughs> I did not realise I had this. I found Requiem by Lauren Oliver and this is the final book in the Delirium series so I now have all of them which is amazing and this one cost me two pounds. Almost done we have about six books left and the next one is The Summer of Impossible Things by Rowan Coleman one that I randomly picked up it says if you could change the past would you? How far would you go to save the person you love? Luna is about to do everything she can to save her mother's life even if it means sacrificing her own beautiful novel about family courage sacrifice and love in all its guises from the sunday times best-selling author of the memory book never heard of that but i did like the sound of this next i picked up my year of rest and relaxation by otessa moshfeg i don't think i've heard anything good about this book <laughs> i don't think anyone likes this book but i bought it anyway because i feel like maybe i will like this i feel like the reasons people didn't like this maybe i could like it this one cost me £2.49. Next up we have Where the World Ends based on a true story set in St Kilda. So this is based on a true story and it says every summer Quill and his friends are put ashore on a remote sea stack to hunt birds but this summer no one arrives to take them home. Surely nothing but the end of the world can explain why they've been abandoned. Cold, starving and clinging to life in the grip of a murderous ocean how will they survive? So it sounds like this is about a bunch of children that are abandoned on a I don't know if it's a small island, I'm not sure, but it sounds interesting and this is based on a true story. This one cost me £2.49. Next up I picked up Asking For It by Louise O'Neill. It says it's the beginning of summer and Emma O'Donovan is 18 years old, beautiful, happy and confident. One night there's a party, everyone is there, all eyes are on Emma. The next day she wakes up on the front porch of her house, she doesn't know how she got there, she doesn't know why she's in pain, but everyone else does. Photographs taken at the party show in great detail exactly what happened to Emma that night. But sometimes people don't want to believe what's right in front of them, especially if the truth concerns the town's heroes. A brave, bold and important novel about sexual consent and betrayal, victim blaming and truth in the age of the smartphone. I don't know if this is fiction. It's not very clear, but it also sounds very, very similar to a case that we watched a documentary about. It sounds interesting and it's £2.50. I lied, I found a couple more books. Uh, we picked up a copy of Little House on the Prairie. This was a pound. And I also have a copy of North Child, which was also a pound. Uh, this is a children's book, I think. But I like the sound of it. And so it's quite a chunky one. I'm going to try that one. Next up, we have The Four Winds by Kristen Hanna. I've just heard a lot of good things about Kristen Hanna's books, including this one. And so. I picked it up. This one cost £2.49. I also picked up a copy of Station Eleven by Emily St. John Mandel. I've heard a lot of mixed things. Some people love this book, some people hate it. And this one cost me a pound. I also found a copy of Fahrenheit 451 by Ray Bradbury. I think this is set in, it's like a dystopian and it's set in a world where they burn all books. This one cost me £1.99. And finally, the last book of this haul, we have Instructions for Heatwave by Maggie O'Farrell. I think I have a couple of other Maggie O'Farrell books that I want to read. I know one of them was a non-fiction. I think this one is fiction. And it says, It's July 1976 and London is in the grip of a heatwave. It hasn't rained for months. The gardens are filled with aphids. Water comes from a standpipe and Robert Riordan tells his wife Greta that he's going round the corner to buy a newspaper. He doesn't come back. The search for Robert brings Greta's children, two estranged sisters and a brother on the brink of divorce back home, each with different ideas as to where their father may have gone. None of them suspects that their mother might have an explanation that even now she cannot share. Very big synopsis for this one, but it sounds interesting. Also love the cover. Uh, and this one costs 99p. And that is everything. 
we had a mix of all sorts in there. Did you like the sound of any of them? Have you already read some of them? Let me know in the comments. If you made it to the end of this video, please leave the sun emoji as the last book's title had the word heatwave and we have now lost the sun. So I need some sunshine, give me some sunshine. And as always, if you like the video, please give it a big thumbs up and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And I will see you next time. Thank you.